So it's February in the UK, it's pretty cold, it's pretty miserable. Who wants to go outside reviewing guns in weather like this? So, I'm not in the UK. I'm out here in sunny Spain. Now this is a better place to do some reviews. This week's review started life because I was looking for a short budget scope to put on my SMK PCP pistol. Because after fitting the folding stock to it, the review of which is here, it became evident that the fitted pistol scope was no longer right. A fact I knew would be the case before I even fitted the stock, effectively turning it into a short rifle. Now there is of course a train of thought that says why not fit a red dot or a laser? both of which would indeed work, but I was looking for some magnification for these old failing eyes. So it occurred to me whilst on holiday I will take the opportunity to look at 10 budget rifle scopes to find out if any of them are any good. It was my intention to put a maximum price tag of £50 UK, but we got a little carried away and finished up with a maximum retail price of £55 UK. But to my defence, seven out of the ten were still below the original £50 price tag, so not too bad. I should point out a couple of things from the start of this week's programme, that this review is not about zeroing a scope. This can be seen in the review I completed a while ago, the link of which is up here now. It's also not a scope review that the scope aficionados or high-end shooters would probably be interested in. It's more as an introduction to scopes for the real people with lower budgets who would like to start in our sport and who knows maybe later spend a lot more money on their gear in the future. <laughs> Which is what most of us finish up doing over time anyway. So, for the guys who think scopes start at £500, as my old teacher used to say, you can be dismissed now. For those staying for the rest of the review, here is a brief lesson on what makes a scope tick, and some of the terminology to help understand what we are indeed waffling on about. The first thing you're going to come up against when looking for a scope is a bunch of numbers, something like 3 to 9 by 40 for example, or 1 inch or 30 millimetres etc. When it comes to scope or telescopic sights it's all focused, if you'll pardon the pun, around light and getting as much light through it and into your eyes as possible. So the last figures are basically the diameter of the centre of the tube of the scope, which in this example is either 1 inch or 30 millimetres. The larger the better as far as getting light in is the best rule of thumb and these figures can go up as much as 34 millimetres or even higher. But as you would expect they are normally found in much more expensive scopes. Indeed all the scopes being reviewed here are one inch tubes but that doesn't mean to say that they're no good because some of these are surprisingly bright. The next figure that affects the amount of light coming in is the last figure of the 3 to 9 by 40 part, which is the example, which is 40 in this case. It represents the diameter of the objective lens, which is the big bit on the end. Naturally, the bigger this is, the more light comes in. These scopes range from times 32 millimetres to times 50 millimetres, but of course, if you're using them on a sunny day in Spain, it's not so much an issue than it would be at dusk in winter in the UK. So what do the other figures mean? Well, the 3 to 9 means it has a zoom lens, not unlike a camera, and goes from 3 times magnification all the way through to 9 times, making the object you're shooting at bigger in the scope and easier to hit than with open sights. So why don't we have one 3 to 90 times? Well apart from the fact it would be as big as Jodrell Bank 
and probably weigh as much as Kim Kardashian's butt, allegedly, trying to use a scope with that level of magnification becomes very difficult to hold the image still and requires a rest of some sort. So, like most things in life, it's finding the balance that suits you and your needs. If you're a dedicated target shooter using bench rests, then a higher magnification can be a real plus. But if you're shooting from a standing or crouching position, taking out a few wood pigeons or doing a spot of plinking over shorter distances, then a lower magnification is more than adequate. Reticles are the next thing to discuss. Now this one can open up a whole can of worms but I intend to just keep this as simple as I can. Basically, it's the crosshair you're looking at and using as your sighting or aim point through the lens. There are effectively two types, wire and etched. The etched reticles are usually finer, sturdier and of course more expensive and naturally finish up in the higher end scopes rather than the budget ones. They are, as the name suggests, etched into the glass inside the scope. The wire version is exactly that, a wire rather than an etching, which is thicker and more susceptible to possible knocks, so a little care is required with this scope. But I would recommend care with all scopes anyway. Then they come in all shapes and sizes when you look through them, such as a straight crosshair version, or a duplex crosshair, or a target dot, or one of the most popular and common, a mill dot version. This last example helps by giving you dots above and below and left and right of centre to allow you to alter your aim without the need to adjust the scope, and that can be for windage or distance. This is a subject all on its own and I don't intend to go through this at this point in any detail at all. There are some seriously complicated ones too, but I wouldn't be looking at those either. There are of course more styles of reticle available and I have no doubt people will leave their comments around their particular opinions and favourites and possibly complain that I haven't gone into finite detail, but I'm not looking to blind people with technicalities to the point they glaze over and decide against the sport because it's too complicated. Not forgetting, of course, these particular individuals were dismissed earlier on anyway. Now there's a lot more to scopes, but we will touch on some of it as we look at the scopes I brought along with me. Now it must be said, that I sat down for three hours writing a script for this review, looking at each individual scope. But it needs to have a bit of a disclaimer at this point and an open and honest admission from my findings. Because a budget scope is just that, a budget scope. It will improve your accuracy, but it won't win you any competitions. They have their shortcomings. These can pretty much be put into two categories. First of all, what you would expect, build quality. After all, they are just that, built to a budget. Focus is the second one. All the scopes I'm reviewing today have a fixed focus, which means they have been pre-focused at a predetermined distance, which may be 25 metres or 30 metres, etc. This becomes evident more so when magnified. The higher the magnification, the less in focus the image can be, the further you are away from that pre-focus point. So, if it was set at, say, 35 metres and you were on a magni maximum magnification, aiming at something 10 metres away, then it's not going to be a very clear image. That in itself is livable and can be worked around. But then there is a thing called parallax error, which is best described as like watching a telegraph pole close up move differently to a far off object behind it. 
Putting it in terms of the scope, the reticle is the telegraph pole and the target is the far off object, which means if you're not on that focus sweet spot, so to speak, then the aim point moves if your eye is not perfectly lined up with your scope. I think the best way to explain this effectively is by showing you. So, scope fixed into position and the camera will move slightly, mimicking your eye. Then see how the aim point moves. The way around this is to always make sure your eye is perfectly in line with the scope or you're shooting out at that pre-focused distance, which will probably be the distance you zeroed the scope in at, say that 25-35 metres. This parallax error, as it is known, does not happen on a more expensive scope if it has a focus ring or a wheel on it, because you will be in that sweet spot if you're in focus all the time. So hopefully you can start and see why there really is a difference between a budget and more expensive scope. But don't let that put you off if your budget won't stretch to a higher grade scope. Because as I've already said, even a budget scope will improve your accuracy. If you set it up correctly. Before we look at each individual scope, it must be stated that all these are made in the same country. No free guesses which country that is. But as with all things from China, some are very different build qualities to others. First up then, I have three offerings from Gamo. Whilst I'm in Spain, seems only fair to start with the Spanish offerings. First one is the lowest price one here and is basically aimed at the very entry level and getting rid of the open sights on a gun and replacing them with an ultra low cost 4x32 or 4x magnification 32mm objective lens going through a 1 inch tube. At approximately 295mm long it comes with what is known as a 3030 type reticle and has supplied a Picatinny rail which is 9 to 11 millimeter mounts which are pretty good with the four bolts giving more support and a lug in the rear to stop slippage on a Springer rifle. So it is pretty much ready to go straight out of the box. As we've already stated it has a fixed focus point. As with all these scopes the turrets have screw-on covers which are designed to keep dirt and damp out of the adjusters and also have rubber seals to help do just that. The adjusters are very clear and easily adjusted by hand using the raised lug. The clicks are very sure and not at all sloppy. The finish is pretty good and it is a real mystery how anyone can make such a usable scope for this money. Just under £25 UK. Even a scope at this price and magnification range can, as we've already said, greatly improve the accuracy of your rifle. Next up, still sticking with Gamma, I have the LC 4x32 WR, which is the same magnification as the previous one, but is shorter at approximately 25mm. It's slightly lighter and made of more plastics to keep it lighter, and I suppose gives a more rugged look to it. The turret covers are also plastic and cover a less easily adjustable type turret which requires either a screwdriver or a coin to adjust them. And whilst I wouldn't call the action sloppy, it isn't as sure-footed and doesn't have the more defined click as its 4x32WR sibling. The mounts or rings as they are known on the other side of the pond again are included but only single bolts either side rather than the doubles we saw before. Like its sibling, it comes with the standard elasticated lens covers. If you're looking for a shorter, more compact scope, this could be more to your preference, but they are both more or less identical in use with the amount of light coming in and the reticle type. And again, very useful and not to be sniffed at, considering its relatively low price tag of just under £40 UK. 
Let's move on from the fixed magnification scopes now with the 3 to 9 by 40 W1PM, our last offering here from Gamo, or is it? More about that later. This one comes in at the higher price end at just under £55 UK. And whilst it still has a one inch tube, it has a larger 40mm objective lens to allow more light in. And although not a massive objective lens, it does make a small difference. The spread of magnification on this scope highlights nicely the scope's strengths and weaknesses. You see, it has a good 9 times upper end magnification, which puts the target closer and easier to hit, without being too high a magnification to cause a shake problem. It does highlight though the fixed focus or parallax because on maximum magnification the range of fixed focus becomes exaggerated and far distance or closer targets fall out of focus more easily. This isn't normally an issue because you won't be shooting out at 100 or 200 metres with a sub 12 foot pound air rifle anyway. And if you're down to 10 metres then you probably don't need the scope on full magnification either. The construction is back to the metal finish of the first Gamo example. It also has the same turret adjusters that can be done by hand without any other tool or coin being required. And they have that preferred by me sure footed click and are not at all muddy. The supplied mount is a one piece system on this one that can add more stability or possibly cause an issue on placing it on the gun depending on the gun you're fitting it to. Overall, again, another nice and very simple and usable budget scope at approximately 315mm long. So, time to move on from the gamo scene and on to the next least expensive. That comes from Rangerite. In fact, I have another trio of scopes from them. Now, like a lot of companies, which includes the gamos just shown, they are importing scopes from China and branding them under their own name. My experience of this is both good and not so good. So let's take a look at these offerings from a company that I have had dealings with in the past and been more than happy with them and their products. In some situations, actually preferring them over big brand names. First up then, the £45 UK 3 to 9 by 40 mil dot. That's £10 cheaper than the Gamo, I hear you say. Yes, it is, but Range Right does not come with any mounts. Though you can get a cheap set for about a five of these days, and it doesn't have the easier adjustable turrets that the Gamo has. Also, using plastic covers rather than the metal ones on the Gamo. That said, the construction of this is pretty good to be fair and is of similar length at about 320 millimeters with a good clear image and my preference a mill dot reticle which would win me over on that part alone. The zoom action is nice and smooth not notchy or gritty overall it's quite a usable little scope. Next on the list is the slightly more expensive 3 to 9 by 40 S. Well, if it has an S after it, it must be good. In this case, though, it doesn't mean sport. It is short. This little sweetheart is only 215 millimeters long, which is both good and not so good. It is terrific if you're looking for a short scope for your gun, which I am for the pistol and stock combination. But it does mean you are very limited to the size of the mounts you can use and where you need to fit them to your gun. So I would check that out before you rush out and buy this little beauty. And no, the mounts are not included in the £48 UK price either. Its diminutive size also has its drawback because the rear lens is smaller than a standard scope and means you have a narrower field of view inside the scope. The larger 40mm objective lens helps you with the light, but it can't cure that narrow field of view. The zoom ring is again very smooth and easy to use, but it does have those tool required turrets, though they do have a nice sure click action to them. 
construction of this little scope is really pretty good. Better than its larger sibling, in my opinion. Oh, and it has a mill dot reticle as well. The last of the range right scopes in the budget test comes in at £55 UK, so it's right at the top end, and is another three to nine times magnification scope, but this time with a 50mm objective lens for a brighter image. Is it noticeable? Yeah. But as with all these scopes, the smaller one inch tube doesn't allow it to benefit from that bigger objective lens fully. Same tool required turrets as on the other range right scopes. And again, no mounts, so you will need to budget for a set of those as well. The zoom ring is a little sticky on this one and not quite as smooth. Maybe it's just on this particular one, but it will annoy me a little. Overall length is about 320 millimeters again, and apart from that zoom ring, the construction is pretty good. The issue here really is, by the time you've bought a set of mounts, you'll be outside the £55 barrier, and you'll need to ask yourself if you think that 50mm objective lens is worth the extra money. Personally, I'm not so convinced. Enough of the range rights, let's move on to the Edgar Brothers 3-9x40 offering. Well, we don't actually need to move that far, because dress this up how you like, but we've probably not even moved out of the same factory. This is pretty much the same as the Range Right scope. It even has the exact same instruction leaflet in the box. It does have the Gamo finger adjuster turrets that I prefer and comes with a set of four bolt mounts included and is almost the identical 320 millimeters in length. This one is £55 UK and has the same simple crosshair type reticle as the Gamo. Now, none of the above comments make this a bad scope. Far from it. It's as though they have raided the same parts bins and made a slightly different and yet the same scope. It could almost be called the Range Gamo or the Gamo Right. This is really a clue to how the companies produce these at the price they do. Same parts and mass production, of course. It is still a bright little scope, smooth action and not a bad item. From here, let's move on to the German sounding Richter Optik, Seilen mit Präzision, which, if my secondary school German is correct, means aim with precision. Excellent! Upon opening the box, the first thing I was greeted with was the self-same instruction leaflet as with the previous two. Hmm. Yes, same length, same shape, again, 3 to 9 by 40 but wait. This has the finger-adjustable, sure-footed, click-adjustment turrets with metal covers, a nice smooth-action zoom ring, not sticky or sloppy, and looking through is really nice and bright, and has my preferred mill dot reticle. The mounts come separate, but are still included in the price, which is in the sub £50 UK price bracket, just at £49.99. But wait, it even has flip-up caps, rather than the elasticated covers on all the rest. Sure, they aren't amazing quality, but nonetheless, they have taken the lead with these. Now, this is obviously made in the same factory, and you shouldn't rush out thinking you have the German-built Porsche equivalent of the scope world. But this one does seem to tick most of the plus boxes, and is within the original £50 budget. Well, we're down to our last two now, the ASG and the BSA. Firstly, the ASG, £52 UK price tag, and no, it doesn't come with the same instruction leaflet. Phew! But yes, you guessed it, it is the same length, and has the same zoom ring at 3 to 9 times magnification, and a nice clear and bright 40mm objective lens. Upon which they give you the official focus point, marked out as 35 yards which should help you minimise the parallax issue. The build quality is pretty good and comes supplied with mounts. It has the finger adjustable turrets in gold this time and metal covers to top them off. No flip up caps this time, but you do get a very nice clear mill dot reticle. 
not too shabby at all. Finally, and probably best out of the longer scopes, the longer named BSA EMD 3 to 9 by 40 WR. The first thing you notice on this one is the heavier looking build quality with the indented BSA logo in the rear of the scope and raised logo on the side. It is pretty much the same length as the others, so had me looking into this a little further. BSA, of course, was a British brand bought out by Gamo, the Spanish company. But yes, you guessed it, this scope is also made in China. But as I've said, the construction seems to be one of the better ones of the bunch, and the turrets are totally different with a finger adjustment system. And they call that the tonics system which is certainly the better quality of the ones here. It comes with four bolt mounts and a slightly different mill dot reticle, which is thinner than any of the others and beautifully clear. No flip up caps, sadly, but you can't have everything for 53 pounds UK now, can you? Okay, we've seen a lot, conclusion time. So what is the winner out of all of these? Naturally, this is my opinion. Now I realise this group does not represent all the budget scopes out there, but it is a fair representation and most of the others are likely to be made in a similar way and probably in the same place. But I would say there are three winners from this particular group. Firstly, the Gamo 4x32WR. This one wins its best in class, I suppose, but it is a small class of just two scopes but it is simply the cheapest scope here and if you don't need any higher magnification or you simply want a good scope for very little money this easily fits the bill and it is one of the best selling scopes at drapers who of course supplied all of these scopes but this is not an advert just an observation next winner is the range right 3 to 9 by 40 s this one wins in the class simply because it is the smallest scope here for the power and is a nice bright and very usable scope so if it's a short compact budget scope you want this could well fit the bill then there is the bsa essential 3 to 9 by 40 that takes the overall top slot because of the slightly better build quality, the better turret adjusters, and for me it has a mill dot reticle, which again is a personal preference. So which of these would I buy? That is a little unfair really, because as much as we all have our own opinions, it doesn't mean they are right for everyone. My personal approach, however, would be to save up a little more money and eradicate that parallax error altogether and improve on the quality a little and buy a Hawk Vantage 3 to 9 by 40 AO. But that's me. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go and enjoy the rest of my holiday.